Hi, I'm Mark McElroy. I'm not a guru. I'm just a guy that happens to use Tana. So I'm not associated with the people who are creating Tana. I'm not one of its programmers or founders. Uh, I don't have any stake in the company, but I am somebody that's really excited about this new tool. Uh, this is a quick tour of my Tana setup, and I wanted to show it to you for two reasons. First, uh, I'm a little proud of it, and second, I want to assure you that you can do it. Um, I've been using Tana since October. I wouldn't call myself a power user. Uh, I'm using about 20% of the power of Tana to do about 80% of the things that I do. So I hope that gives you a lot of hope that everything you're about to see in my setup, you could see and do in a setup of your own. So let's take a look at my home in Tana. Here is my today page. It starts with something I call my daily routine. And when I expand that, you'll see that I'm working with something I've called the five minute morning. This pops up automatically at the top of every one of my daily pages because I've built it inside the super tag day. And when I open its configuration, you can see that within day, I have this daily routine node that contains the five minute morning and some other things. So that's up at the top of every daily page. You can put your own contents there. In my five minute morning section, that's where I take just five minutes to do a quick brain dump of all the things that are on my mind about the day. So it varies a lot in terms of its contents from day to day. Um, I'll capture a few things that I might want to do. You can see that I entered a to-do there. It will show up later in my to-do list because Tana automatically harvests and brings all those things together on my behalf. In the meantime, I got this one done earlier this morning. I'm going to check it off and we'll see how it does not appear in to-do lists later on now as a result. Beneath the five minute morning, you'll see that I also have sections where I track things like today's weight, which is actually a little higher than I would like it to be. I've got to lose about 20 pounds. Maybe I can do that after the holiday season's over. Also, if I have exercised today, I can check that off. If I've eaten within my um, dietary preferences and parameters, I can check that off. And if I've done my writing for the day, I check that off. I also give each day a daily score on a scale from 1 to 10, mostly just for fun. So far, today's a 7. Uh, but I think that by recording this way, I might also be able to track them over time, compare them to the events going on in my life, maybe learn some interesting things about uh, the biorhythms I have over an extended schedule. Also part of every day is what I call my flagged for today live search. This is a query that's looking specifically for to do's that I've created where I've ticked off a little box that says I want to do it today. Um, I could assign these to dates, but this has proven to be really helpful for me. I just check that little box and that tells me that that's something I intend to get done today. The live search pulls it here. Um, these are things that are um, tasks associated with no particular project. I do have one project going, more about projects later, and you can see I've got one to do from the project parallel lines uh, set up to be done today. So that's kind of how every day begins. And then I use the today page as a working space as I create things, as I make notes on the things I'm reading, as I'm working. Uh, if I come up with more to-dos that I want to track and handle, I just throw them in the today page. I'm going to let Tana make sense of it all later on. So to look at other places, let's look at my to-do list. Man, this is as simple a to-do list as one could possibly create other than just a, a series of bullet points, I guess. But Tana has made it easy for me. Um, I type a line and then I end it with the tag to do and automatically Tana just brings them here. Uh, I've set this up to group these by the project that they're in because each of my to do's um, has some basic ideas associated with it. The project, the start date, a due date and whether or not I want to focus on it today. So it makes it easy for Tana to pull these things together into one place and then I can look at them by project if I like. You'll notice I'm using an odd little trick that has a neat bit of psychology behind it. I used to always organize my to-dos by, by writing them as verbals. Uh, uh, complete this, send this, finalize this. And now I just write about whatever I want to do in the past tense as though it's done. And I check it off when I 
make that um, vision a reality. It's a trick some friends um, from a consulting firm taught me, and you might want to adopt that as a way to handle your to-do list and just see if that subtle shift in the way you express tasks helps you think about what you'll do to get those done and make that a reality. If I want to see just a list of my active projects, Tana makes that easy too. Here it's showing me um, projects in three categories, those that have not been started, those that are active, and one that is paused. And each of these projects, if I were to expand them, also automatically collects um, the due date. I set the status, but you can also see that the project to do's are there. Parallel Lines is kind of a complex project. It's a novel that I'm working on. And so I have steps even here for analysis, for editing, for research, for launch prep. Um, Tana makes it easy to put all those together and to keep them associated with the right project. Um, I keep all of my projects that are current tagged with a project super tag. Once a project's done, I change that to archived projects. Now, I've been using a system outside of Tana to manage my projects and things to do for a long time. I'm just moving those here. But already here was me planning to sort of tweak Tana and make it work the way I want to. And that project is an archive project. Has the same setup as all my other projects do, but I've just changed the super tag so it doesn't show up anymore in my searches for projects. I have decided to keep a journal in Tana and I'm keeping that very simple because I've noticed if I make anything elaborate for a journal, there's a lot of friction that pops up and I find myself dragging my feet about writing it because, oh, I don't want to find a picture to go with the day, that kind of thing. So instead, I'm using basic text. Tana's made this very easy for me to do. Here's how easy it is. If I go to my today page and I want to do a journal entry, um, let's see, maybe something about what we had for lunch. I can say lunch with Clyde Parks, my husband. And with that done, I label this as a journal entry. Excuse me, I need a space in there. And when I do, now this is a journal entry, I can expand it. Um, I have collapsed fields that are empty, but I can expand them easily if I want to so that I can add details. Um, this in particular is a journal that involves a specific person, so I'll add his name. And a uh, place, we went to New Tokyo, uh, which is a place I've not written about, but well, I have written about it before. There it is in my library. So New Tokyo is there uh, where we had some excellent sushi. And then I can just make my uh, journal entry. This will be a dull one. Uh, we had great sushi at New Tokyo. Correct my typos. And I'm good to go. That's my journal entry. When I go back to my journal page, you see it's automatically collected for me, added to the table, pops up at the top. Oh, I forgot to set my mood. I will add, um, I'm content. That was a very nice lunch indeed. So with those things done, um, my journal kind of manages itself. These entries appear. I have journals going back to like the seventh grade. And some of those have been carried over into electronic form. The last seven years of journal entries exists. Uh, I'll be moving that slowly and surely into Tana step by step over time, uh, as well as recording future entries. More interesting is the Dream Gallery. And this is actually based on a kind of a gallery I saw um, Braga Bang create. Uh, I didn't want to do this for my journal, but uh, I am someone who I wrote a book on uh, lucid dreaming several years back. And since then, I've kept a dream journal of all the different dreams that I have every night. And it's a fascinating pastime because you start to notice patterns, recurring characters, themes that surface again and again. Right now, I'm keeping a dream gallery in Tana and uh, recording dreams that occur. And I'm using the Mid Journey AI to create these kind of haunting illustrations that capture moments from these dreams. And then the dream form itself is kind of interesting. Let me open up an innocuous one that I can show you. Uh, here is where um, I dreamed of uh, being with an old colleague of mine. She's a bird watcher. We were out looking for birds. She had these odd jewels inlaid around her lips. Uh, and we found this big hollow tree, looked for birds inside, but found that there was a homeless family living in there. Uh, the next step was to think about the primary symbols in the dream. So Susan, my old colleague, uh, the diamond lips, um, I decided were a symbol for valued advice. 
And the family in the tree is the idea that people could grow maybe when they find shelter. And put that all together and it becomes this reminder that now that I'm working alone without colleagues around, maybe I'm missing out on some really great opportunities from growth that could come from the good advice they could give me. So that's something related to professional growth. I set that up as a theme in Tana and recorded the date of the dream. So that's what goes into all of my entries that become part of the dream gallery. And I just love going back and scrolling through these images from dreams in the past, revisiting them, sorting them, looking at them uh, to find patterns. And, and it, it's kind of a, a magic mirror uh, for my subconscious. I do have a blogging pipeline I've done in Tana. Uh, again, this is really simple, really straightforward. Um, you see here um, blog posts that are in a process. This Tana tour is one. It's Post type is video, which it will be when I'm done. Um, I rank them by enthusiasm and urgency, and then I sort this list by enthusiasm because the things I'm enthusiastic about, I'm most likely to do first. So that's what I've done here uh, to make my blogging pipeline work well for me. When I have new ideas for a blog, um, all I do is wherever I'm working on the today page, I just uh, put in the blogging idea. Let's say I'm gonna do something about, oh, I don't know, uh, dog grooming. And beyond that, I just tag it as a blog post. Once I do that, the super tag brings with it all of these fields that I've defined. Uh, I can say which blog this would be for. That would probably be for um, madebymark.com. Uh, I can dash in a quick outline of the post. Uh, here I might write about the fact that we've decided to buy a dog wash of our very own and put in a closet down the way. Um, and then I can rank my enthusiasm, the urgency, the status, all the things I would need to do to, to get this into my system and then see it appear here in the blogging pipeline. Right now, because there's no enthusiasm or urgency score, it's pretty far down. My media diet is a chart that's created for me automatically anytime I log that I've watched a video, a movie, read a book, read a post. All of those get referenced, and as I create those, uh, they're added automatically by Tana to this table, which I really love coming back to. It's a great way to revisit the stuff that I've read, uh, see the scores, uh, look for influential pieces. Um, anytime I create one of these, uh, embedded in them is all the metadata I need to go back and uh, work with them. I'll open one up so you can see. This was um, Ev Chapman's excellent little Tana tour that she did uh, uh, for um, uh, all of us just a few days ago in conjunction with uh, Rob Hayesfield. So uh, I watched that, took some notes on it, put it in my system, and now it appears here in my media diet. At the end of the month, sometimes I'll write a blog post that brings all those together, or I add things to my media diet list on the blog. So this is a great reference for that. Beyond that, uh, I have a list of topics I follow. Uh, these are tagged as topics. Uh, they show up again and again in everything from dreams to blog entries to you name it. Uh, all of those things are associated with a certain topic. I keep a list of open questions. If I'm reading and studying and questions occur, I just jot them down in Tana and I tag them as a question. They automatically then appear in this list. I can then go look for answers, mark them as answered, and they disappear. I do keep a garden of evergreen ideas. In this case, these are ideas that occur to me that are maybe supported by more than one source that I'm reading. I bring them together in an evergreen note. And as you can see, my evergreen notes expand in this way with points that support them and then points that might challenge them. And over time, this little garden grows. So reading notes come together to form evergreen notes and those go in my evergreen garden. Tana collects those from every daily page where I stick them as I'm working. I don't have to do that. And it's really nice to have them all brought to one place for me automatically. I do want to show you how it looks when I work with a book, and this will probably be my last thing in this tour. Uh, this is a book I recently led, read called Off the Edge. It's about the, um, the, the newfound popularity of the flat earth idea and how conspiracy culture shapes the way people perceive the world. Uh, here you see the fields I've set up associated with the book SuperTag. Um, I have the title, of course, the author, a URL that goes to Amazon. Uh, the source status shows complete because I have completely read it. I use that same tagging system across several different databases I'm maintaining, pending, active, or complete. There are just three states to keep it simple. 
Uh, I show you how much I liked it, when I finished it, what the genre is, the publisher, and the year. And then you'll notice that in book notes, the first thing I do when I open up a book is I come in and I make myself an outline of the chapters. And then as I'm reading, I take notes within those chapters. And you see here my reading notes uh, as I was reading through, the fleeting notes with a different super tag. All of these uh, automatically are filled in with a reference to the source. So later on, when I come across these in an atomized form, I know where they came from. They're also key to topics. So if I go off to start writing about conspiracy theory, all the books I've read on conspiracy theories, Tana brings them together for me automatically. So this has become a really cool way to um, keep my book notes at the end of each chapter. I tag them. Uh, I always write a little one paragraph summary of the chapter. I tag it summary. The nice thing is that I can then use one of Tana's live searches to bring all those summaries together and put them in order. And look at that. You have in about, oh, 800 words or so, uh, a nice summarization of the entire book uh, that's assembled for me from the summaries I write as I finish each chapter. Again, it's just so nice to have someone doing that for me. Uh, I also keep track of all the reading notes and all the fleeting notes that have appeared while I've been reading on uh, a certain subject. So that's kind of how my book notes work, and it's turned out to be just exactly what I've been looking for all this time. I was able to build and achieve this in Tana in about five minutes. And then later when I needed to change things, I could tweak it and edit it and rearrange it and drag some things around. I wasn't constrained by the structure I envisioned at first. It's been able to grow and evolve as my needs have grown and evolved. That's a pretty big deal. As you know, if in other systems that you've used, you've had to go back and uh, restructure things entirely or manually. Tana just makes it easy. So I hope this gives you some ideas about how one person is using Tana to track a whole lot of different kinds of information and also gives you confidence because believe me, if I can do this, I'm the guy who when people started talking about the power of data view, my eyes just glazed over because I, I just never got it. I never felt comfortable in it. I could never do more than very basic things with it. But with Tana, I feel like with just a very short learning curve, I was in a good place and felt confident enough to go on and build out a world that I really enjoy visiting every day. I'm eager to get to my computer to get to Tana. That brings me up with the last thing I wanted to share very quickly with you, and that's this. I am a person who has had a very um, hard philosophy ever since I left um, using Rome Research. And that philosophy was, my notes belong to me. I want them on my local hard drive. I do not want to use or trust a cloud service with them, uh, especially for things like journals or dream journals. Those are very private things. So I want them on a local server in local files, preferably in Markdown, uh, so that I can easily move them from place to place and feel like they're future-proofed. Uh, I want them encrypted on both ends. All those things have been very important to me. Tana? is up in the cloud and it's a software as service and at some point we're all going to have to start paying for it. Uh, I don't believe that my information is necessarily encrypted. Um, there's a lot of risks that one takes I think as one is working with Tana if you have the philosophy I've always had. I have to say that as strongly as I've believed in those things the magic and the power and the ease of use of Tana has convinced me that it's a place that I want to call a digital home. Still using Obsidian for long form writing, still using Ulysses for uh, bringing documents together, but Tana is now becoming my central place to process information, process to-dos, and get things done. So it's remarkable enough to have made a, a sort of a change in my attitude towards software and services and uh, where information lives. And while there are inconveniences, if you don't have an internet connection, I live in a very rural place and sometimes I don't, you're not gonna use Tana because it requires one. But you begin to learn that with certain tools or certain requirements of you, you work to accommodate those requirements and you get to a good place and it makes it all seem worthwhile. That's my little Tana tour. If you've enjoyed it, let me know. I love to hear from folks. Uh, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I don't have a course I'm trying to push your way. I just want you to, to maybe have an idea about what you could do to have a really good time with this tool. I'm Mark McElroy. Thanks for watching.